guys. Friday morning, Steve here. Gonna head out this morning, hit Goodwill and two local thrift stores, hoping to find some good stuff for resale and make some profit. Before we head out, I got a couple of packages sold last night, I think three sales. Actually there was four, but one, someone sent an offer on a handbag. I accepted within five minutes and they still haven't paid. So only three are going out. So I'll show you what those are, I'm gonna pack them up and then we'll get going. So the Kokak took about a week to sell. The Budweiser hat took a few years to sell. That was incredible. That was very long. And then this sold within a couple of days. And I always send out my hats, but I send them out in these eBay 8x6x4 boxes. I know some people, I've seen them on Facebook groups talking about how they put them in envelopes or whatnot. And this Budweiser hat is a soft one. It's not a formed one. So that possibly could go. But for what it's worth, these boxes are only four ounces. So I'm only paying slightly more for the shipping. And I'd rather do that and just take away that chance of someone complaining. All right, I just pulled up to Goodwill. It is 9.25. All right, we got three big full carts out, 9.25 a.m. Too bad, I just found a nice Ferrari hat, but the bill is broken half. All right, found the Chanel bag. Is it real? I don't know. I mean, Goodwill, it's marked for 15 bucks. Feels like good quality. I did a quick Google and that Chanel bag is fake. Let me show you what I learned to identify what is fake and what is real. Okay, so the first telltale sign that I spotted right away to know it was a fake when I looked this up online while I was still at the store was the CC logo. Okay, the real ones, as you see in this picture, the top of the right C always overlaps and the bottom of the left C overlaps. So always remember, top right overlaps. The one that I found today there was really no overlap on either top or bottom. It was kind of like almost just blended together at both intersections. Now here's a picture of the one I saw today. Now look at where it intersects. There's no overlap. It's almost blended together at both spots. So that's a real good indicator right there that that's a fake bag. One other thing to look for on a fake is the stitching on the strap. This is exactly like the bag I found. It was the leather within the chain. And this is the kind of stitching I found on the bag today. You see it has like a double layered, where this one almost tucks under the top and then it's sewn. Now if we scroll down, here's a reel. And you can see, you really don't see the stitching. It's on the side, very fine. So there's two indicators of how to identify a fake Chanel bag. I'm in the women's department checking out the workout gear and this is what I'm looking for. Found some Lululemon. Here's a nice Peter Millar shirt. But with the ink written with the prices, if I can't sell it like that. And if I were to try to take that out, chances are it's going to bleed and a good chance of ruining the shirt. Oh, and here's another Peter Millar. I could buy both and pair them up, but too risky. All right, leaving Goodwill. So we're gonna go on to the next store and I'll show you everything at the end, I guess. So here's what they got for golf clubs. Most of it is old junk, but I just scored two really good clubs. See, here's the thrift shop at the hospital. This is the hospital thrift store. Small, crowded, but got a little of everything. So I scored a nice bag of goodies at the thrift store at the hospital. Got to make a stop at the fish market. One thing about living in Florida right on the water, get some really good fresh caught fish. Got a nice swordfish steak for me and my wife for dinner tonight. And um, good stuff man. We cook it on the grill. Swordfish, mahi, and tuna. Or my three favorites on the grill. Oh, it's so good. 
Who likes seafood? Put it down below. What's your favorite seafood? All right, so at Goodwill, I got three items. First, there's a Lululemon, just a little tank top, size six. It was $5, which is a little bit much, but whenever they see Lululemon, they're gonna mark it up a little bit. So, I might only make 10 bucks or so on that. All right, also at Goodwill, got these women's Uggs, the knitted ones, very nice condition. Not much wear on the soles. We look at from behind, it's pretty flat. Uh, Six dollars, which for my goodwill, that's actually a good price for shoes. Usually they mark things ten, twelve dollars for a decent brand. And the third item is this leather pocketbook from Brighton. It's like a deep red, very sturdy pocketbook with like a heavy leather. It's not soft. It's more of a stiff type bag. So Brighton, some of them do very, very well. I paid eight dollars for that, and Brighton pocketbooks. Can go from like 40 bucks up to like 100. I'm thinking this would be like a $40 bill. So I grabbed 13 books at the thrift store. Cost $15 because two of them were $2. And they scan in at a profit of $80 in change. So I'll be adding those to my other three stacks from the week. And 40 gives me 43 books, scanning in at a total profit net after fees and cost. Of $479 and then I have a few items that I'm gonna send in as well for another $90 worth of stuff so a total of $577 in net profit going out to Amazon FBA okay I picked up two golf clubs at the same store this one is a tailor-made burner 2.0 sand wedge nice condition steel shaft with a nice grip on it. And they're comping out good money. And this cost me $2. And the other one I got today, Cobra Baffler, 19 degree hybrid, 3H. A few scuffs on the bottom, but that's okay. Overall good shape, a few nicks on it, but it's a used club. Graphite shaft, Tour AD, with a nice grip. Also $2. All right, at the hospital thrift store, got this short sleeve, Peter Millar, $3, which was a good deal. And you saw like the other Peter Millars I saw at Goodwill, those were $8. So this is a short sleeve one. Should do decent, it's an extra large, you know, maybe $20. At the hospital thrift store, I also grabbed this really cool it's like an embossed pattern, country western leather belt. I guess it's country western theme, desert theme. It's got like this cactus, then a tarantula. It repeats. It's got a long horn, like all in this like raised in embossed pattern. I don't know what it's called. And it just repeats. It doesn't have a buckle. And I don't think it's ever been used because if you look at all the holes, they're all perfectly. There's no denting from the buckle pin. So a real nice cool belt. Paid $1 for it. And from short hole to long hole, it measures between 31 to 32, up to about 36 inch. So it's a pretty good size for average waist. So there's no branding on it, but it's a cool pattern. Western wear seems to do good. Try to get like 20, 30 bucks out of it. Next up, I got this Rival Vintage Electric Can Opener. It's pretty cool, it's got like a chrome front, and it's green. It's pretty clean, I'm gonna give it a nice shine, make it look really good. The cord stores inside in the back. Overall, good condition. Paid $4 for this, and you know, I don't know what it's gonna go for. Maybe 20, 30 bucks. Just thought it was cool, it's something interesting. I like vintage stuff. And I also picked up two books at the thrift store at the hospital. One is a contract book, it's going to Amazon. Cost me 50 cents and it shows about a $5 profit. And this one is a basic programming book. It's a vintage one. And this one will go on eBay. Um, there was a few others, not the exact one, that looked like they sell for about 15 or 20 bucks. And this was also 50 cents. All right, so all in all, I'm pleased with today. I got books for Amazon. I got inventory for eBay. I got some name brand items. I got some vintage items, I got some cool items, some 
big ticket items that will bring good profit. I got some small profit items. So a well-rounded haul. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.